Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amelie, if you guys are new here. Today's video, we are doing a Q&A, just kind of like life update, what's going on in my life, everything in between. I asked you guys on my Instagram to ask me some questions, so I read through them, picked out my favorites, and we're just gonna get into it. Before we start, I've been like obsessed with mukbangs recently, and I thought it would be fun to do like a little chit chat eat with me type video so i went to chipotle got some food so pause this video go get a snack a drink if you haven't eaten yet whether it's breakfast lunch or dinner go get some food we're gonna eat together because then that way we just feel like we're out on a little lunch date or something because i know that especially as girls it's always fun to eat with someone and it's not always easy to eat alone so we're gonna eat together so welcome to the q a and we're having a little lunch date my whole car literally smells like Chipotle and I'm so excited to eat this. Hopefully I don't spill. I like to make my Chipotle a little bit more like a salad. So I got lettuce, chicken, salsa, and corn because you guys know I'm pretty sensitive to dairy and oh, I also got beans, but not that many beans because beans make me fart, which is like, sorry, TMI. All right, let's get right into it. For a little background information to anybody new here, I'm 18, I live in California, I'm going to SDSU in the fall as an incoming freshman. I love all things health, wellness, fashion, fitness, and I've been on my fitness journey for four years now. So if you want like a more in-depth fitness journey, definitely go check out my fitness journey posted on my YouTube channel. But with that, let's get into the questions. Okay, the first question is, why did I choose SDSU? I was choosing between SDSU and UCSB. At the end of the day, I decided to choose SDSU because I want to major in business marketing and SDSU had a way better business marketing program than UCSB. And also, I just wanted a little change up and I go to Santa Barbara a lot because my boyfriend actually lives in Santa Barbara and so as hard as it was to choose to go into long distance again with him I just feel like I need a change of scenery and Santa Barbara isn't that far from where I live right now and I just feel like I needed to get out and go live in a whole new city that I've never lived in never explored before so that's why I chose San Diego State I also just loved the campus the meal plan like I really just felt at home on that campus and I felt like I would be better supported there and I also love how it's a mix of beach city there's like an island like I'm just so excited to explore Explore that part of California so that's why I chose San Diego State how do you stay motivated all the time and especially how do you stay consistent I'm not always motivated I'll tell you that like there are days like today actually I woke up and I was like wow I really do not want to go to the gym but I know that I never leave the gym regretting my workout I always feel better than when I came in and I think about my future self I think about how I want to feel and I go to the gym because at the end of the day it's not about how you feel it's not about whether you want to go work out or not it's about if you do it or not and I always feel better after I work out also, I will say I've gotten to the point in my fitness journey where I'm a better, happier, nicer person when I move my body and work out. And it's become something that I genuinely enjoy doing because it's dedicated me time. It's dedicated alone time where I just get to work on myself, be with my thoughts. So honestly, going to the gym isn't that hard for me anymore because I actually look forward to it. But on the days where I'm not as motivated or maybe I'm just not feeling it, I think about my future self and I think about how I wanna feel and I remind myself that even if I just go for 30 minutes, I'm gonna be better off than not going at all. How is my social life? I'm honestly really, really happy with where my social life is right now. I feel like I'm surrounded with a great group of friends and I have the opportunity to go out if I want to but I also feel like I've done a really good job at knowing myself and setting in boundaries and prioritizing balance and my own priorities before parties and stuff because that was something that I struggled with more my senior year of like not wanting to go out but feel like I should go out and now I feel like I've found a really good balance of going out when I wanna go out but staying in when I know I need to stay in and just relax and have a movie night by myself. And I'm also surrounded by a great group of friends that I'm so grateful for that I know I can hang out with to go on a hike. Like we're gonna go on a sunset hike this evening or to go to the farmer's market or to go shopping. So I feel like I have a great group of friends with diverse interests and partying isn't like the center of our friendship, which is why I'm very, very content right now with my social life. This is hitting right now. Can you talk about balancing workouts with a very busy schedule? Absolutely. I'm just gonna lay it down for you. You're not as busy as you think you are. There are 24 hours in a day. Sure, you're asleep for what, eight of those hours? You have at least 12 waking hours, probably more, 
that you can spend doing things. And yes, we have school, we have a job, we wanna have a social life, but you can make time. You can wake up earlier to fit in your workout. You're never too busy to work out. That's why during all of high school, I woke up at 4.30 a.m. every single morning because I knew that my school started at 7.30 and then I always had stuff after school and then I wanted to see my boyfriend at night. I knew I wouldn't fit in my workout during the day, so I chose to wake up extra early and fit it in in the morning. Plain and simple, if you don't have time, make time. And also, you can have a super effective workout in 30 minutes to an hour. Like. You probably sit on TikTok scrolling on your phone for 30 minutes without even knowing. So if you just put your phone down and try to fit in even a 20 minute workout, you're gonna feel better, your mood's gonna be improved, you're gonna have more energy, and you're just gonna feel so accomplished. I'm a teen girl and I struggle with self-confidence and body image, do you have any advice? Your self-confidence and body image has nothing to do with how you look. Let me say that again. Nothing to do with how you look. I have been shredded, six pack, skinniest I've ever been in my life, had awful body image days, did not feel confident, and I've also been way less lean than I am now, and I had great body image days. Your self-confidence and your body image is a direct reflection of how you are treating yourself and how you view the lifestyle that you live. I notice that I always have better body image and more self-confidence when I'm consistently working out, consistently eating healthy, taking care of myself, getting enough sleep, putting time and effort into myself, putting on a nice outfit, stuff like that. Like when I treat myself with respect and I treat myself well, I have better body image and more confidence because I'm confident in the lifestyle that I'm living and I'm confident in the way that I'm treating myself. You should never compare yourself to other people because you will never look like them. Why would you spend time comparing yourself to other people when you are in your body and that's the only body you're ever gonna get and instead spend that time working on yourself and turning yourself into the most confident version of you you can't be a confident version of someone else you get to be a confident version of you so spend time investing in yourself think about it but i will say it is so okay to have physical goals for yourself. It's okay to want to lose weight. It's okay to want to gain weight. It's okay to want to put on muscle. What matters is that you go about it in a healthy manner and love yourself throughout the whole process. What keeps you motivated in life, but also YouTube? In life, I would say what motivates me is my desires. I want to live a healthy life full of experiences, travel, love, friendship, laughter, and I know that in order to get those experiences, I'm gonna have to work really hard. I'm gonna have to get an education. I'm gonna have to have a career because I obviously wanna be able to travel. I'm gonna have to be social because I wanna have friends. And I know that I don't wanna sit and work a nine to five personally to each their own, but that's just not my goal. So I know that I have to be creative with the career that I choose. And honestly, I feel like that's what motivated me to start a YouTube channel because I was like, this is the only career that I can see myself really enjoying. And I'm just so grateful to be where I am. But honestly, I don't even need motivation for YouTube. Like I love talking to you guys so much. Like I feel like this community is just so tightly knit and supportive of each other that like every YouTube video that I vlog, I just feel like I'm on FaceTime like right now. Yeah, I'm looking at myself, but I feel like I'm looking at you. Like, I don't know if I sound crazy, but I just love talking to you guys. So honestly, YouTube takes no motivation. It's just filming what I love and feeling like I'm talking to friends. What's your hair wash routine? I struggle with it because it's always greasy after I work out. It's so hard, honestly, being a gym girl and trying to wash your hair. I would say I wash my hair two to three times a week and it's like backs are key. I don't really have a routine, but like if I sweat a little bit, during my workout, maybe I'll rinse my hair, but I won't wash it. I'll just get it wet because then I feel like I'm clean and then I blow dry it and it's good. Maybe I'll throw in some leave-in conditioner. And then if I'm like medium sweaty, I'll just like put it in a slick back. So if you guys see me with a slick back, just know I probably didn't wash my hair. Sometimes I'll do a double slick back like two days in a row if I really don't want to wash my hair and that's really gross. And then if I know that I'm going to have like a super sweaty workout, like maybe I'm going to hot Pilates or something, I'll slick my hair back and then wash it that day because hot Pilates gets me drenched. Like if I'm drenched, I just have to wash it because it's just gross. How has doing YouTube impacted you positively and negatively? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? A hundred percent yes. I would not change anything about my life. Like I love doing YouTube. Positively, I would say it motivates me and gives me drive because I want to be the best version of myself for you guys. And also, I know that if I want to continue my career as a YouTuber, I have to maintain the habits that people want to watch. So, 
in a weird way, having a YouTube channel really motivates me because like maybe I want to skip my workout, but I'm vlogging today. I know that you guys are going to look at me for motivation and I want to be my best self. It really helps me like stay on track, stay motivated and stay driven. And I honestly can't really think of any negative impacts that YouTube has. I will say because my career is so self-driven and I kind of work for myself, there is a constant pressure to always be doing something. Even when I'm just trying to relax, I'm thinking in my head, other people are doing better than me. Other people are doing more. I should film this right now. So there is that pressure to always be working on YouTube and always be posting something to social media. Even then, I love YouTube. Like, I can't even say that's a negative thing. It's just something that I've noticed. It's also hard sometimes constantly being on camera because then if I'm having maybe a bad body image day or something like that, or my skin is breaking out, it's not always easy to be in front of the camera. And any advice on long distance relationships? Trust is everything. If you guys don't trust each other, it's not gonna work. You can't expect to know what that person is doing every second of the day. You can't expect them to limit their social life for you. And you can't expect them to have their life revolve around you. You're a part of it, just like they're a part of yours. So I would say trust is everything, communication is key, and just know that that person is going through long distance with you for a reason. Like they obviously love you. No one would put themselves into long distance if they didn't care about you. So just put trust in that and communicate your feelings. And you also have to figure out how to show love to each other in different ways, like words of affirmations, gifts, quality time, because obviously that physical aspect isn't there anymore. So you have to just make it a priority to communicate your love for each other in a different way. How do I feel now that I'm leaving for college? I am so excited. I'm so ready to get out of my hometown, meet new friends, get new experiences, discover a new city. But at the same time, I'm really sentimental about it because it's crazy to think that I'll never live in the same house as my family ever again. Like live, live, like sure I'll come home and visit, but I probably won't like live there. And it's just crazy like not to be in high school anymore. And I'm such a sentimental person. Like I'll like sit there and be like, wow, I'll never drive through my home as a high school student again. Like that's kind of the stuff that I like to think about. So I'm definitely more excited than I am nervous or scared or anything like that. But it is like crazy. Like I'm just like trying to soak up this summer and really be present with my family, my friends, because I know that it's all about to change. I'm also definitely a little bit scared about dorm life and communal bathrooms because I have like a 20 step skincare routine and I'm not excited to have to share a bathroom, but I know it will help me grow and I'm sure there will be lots of fun memories made in that communal bathroom. <gasps> Advice for high school, go to everything, participate in spirit days, try as much as you can because high school, you learn so much about yourself. You learn what you like, you learn what you don't like, you learn the type of people that you wanna surround yourself with. You learn about the type of people you don't want to surround yourself with. And I feel like people think it's not cool to dress up for spirit days, but it is. And maybe this is the leadership student coming out of me, but I was like decked out in spirit gear for all four years. And it truly made my high school experience so much more fun. Cause like I would randomly get to dress up as like a tourist or I would wear all green to school. Like stuff like that is so fun. And like going to football games, like really just soak it all in. Also put good study habits in place. Put your grades first. I'm not telling you to like cry about them every night, but make sure that you're setting yourself up with good study habits because your grades really do matter, especially when it comes to picking a college and you don't wanna hit your senior year and not get into your dream college because your freshman, sophomore yourself didn't prioritize their grades. Share a little bit about your social media journey. So I started my YouTube channel in 2022. It was something that I've always wanted to do, but I was always kind of scared to do because I didn't want to get judged. And I finally just decided to do it. Started it in 2022. The first few videos that I posted didn't really go anywhere. And then I posted my fitness journey video and that video blew up. And then I think I also posted like a 5 a.m. morning routine video and that one blew up as well. So then I started getting a following, which was like surreal and it still is like I, I can't even. But then I started getting a following um, and it actually happened really quickly. Like I did not expect to gain as many subscribers as I did. So then I started posting on TikTok and over time I've grown my TikTok. I have like 60,000 followers on TikTok. So it's definitely way less than my YouTube fam, but that's okay. Go follow though. And then I also started posting on Instagram. Instagram was like a way later one because I don't know why. 
I feel like there's this unspoken rule about Instagram that you have to take it really seriously and you're weird if you post reels and oh she's taking this too seriously oh why did she post that should I comment this what should I caption it like I just like everyone stresses way too much about Instagram so I really hesitated posting on that and then when I finally started posting on it that's when Instagram kind of took off but it's still my smallest platform for sure and then in 2023 like the early stages of 2023 I ended up getting a manager she reached out to me and I looked into her management group I really liked her I really liked what they stood for I knew some of the influencers that they represented so I signed with her and now she helps me with like brand deals and stuff like that so it has been a learning experience for sure it was so unexpected but I am loving the process and I'm just so grateful to be able to call this my job Okay, sorry about that. My camera ran out of storage, but it's okay. I brought my second camera. So sorry if the quality changed, but we're just gonna keep yapping. What is your dream career? Where would I like to live? This. I literally can't think of doing anything else. No matter what I do in the future, I hope that YouTube is still a part of my life. So I would definitely say this aspect is part of my dream career. But eventually, I want to start my own business in the health and fitness industry. I would like to live in SoCal, but before I like move in and like figure out where I'm going to live live, I want to travel the world. Tips for food freedom. Believe it or not, there was a point in my life where I would have not been eating this. And here we are, enjoying it together, and my life is so much better because of it. You have to realize that food is fuel and any goal that you have for yourself, whether it's physical, mental, career-wise, anything, Food is what's going to get you there. I know it's cheesy, but if you're a car, you can't run on no fuel, so you need it. And there is no such thing as good or bad foods because foods are just made up of macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat. Every food has different ratios, and every food is going to do something different for your body. Sure, there are foods that might be more optimal for your fitness goals, and there's foods that are less optimal, but sometimes those foods are more optimal for making memories, laughter, travel experiences. You have to realize there is no such thing as good or bad food. It's just food, and it's fuel, and it's made up of the same components, and your body knows how to process it and deal with it. It gets so much easier. When it comes to food freedom, I think it just comes down to facing your fears if you have any fear foods and just eating them and realizing that after you eat a cookie you look the exact same you feel the exact same you're fine like you're totally fine food is your friend your body is your friend and it all just helps our body in different ways how long have me and Grant been together? If you're new here Grant is my boyfriend and me and Grant have been together for two years and two months which is crazy we were literally just talking about this when me and Grant started dating, I was a sophomore in high school and he was a junior and now we're both in college. Like, it's just crazy how time flies. <sighs> Binge eating tips. If you haven't watched my updated fitness journey video, definitely go watch it because we talk about binge eating, restriction, like all of the above. But when it comes to binge eating, I found it to be the most helpful to sit down and tell myself that I can always come back for more. Food is fuel. Food is meant to make you feel good. Stuffing yourself till you feel sick does not make you feel good. So why would you do that to yourself? Your body is trying to help you. Why aren't you trying to help it? Your body doesn't want that much food, but you can always come back. If you're hungry, go back for more. You have to get rid of the all or nothing mentality to stop binge eating. If you have an entire box of cookies in front of you, you don't have to eat all of them so that they won't be there to tempt you tomorrow. Your body would much rather you have one, two, even three cookies right now, and then three more cookies tomorrow than all of them right now because it's just gonna cause your body so much more pain that way. This is kind of harsh, but I also just found that letting myself binge and saying that I'm making the conscious choice to overeat and stuff myself really helped me stop doing it because I didn't feel guilty about it because I consciously made the decision to let myself do it and then I realized how disgusting and awful I felt after like I literally felt like I was going to throw up and then realizing that that choice made me feel like that gave me the ick like I literally did not want to do it anymore and this isn't to say that I don't get the urge sometimes like I will catch myself having that all or nothing mentality but then I sit back and I remind myself how do I want to feel how is this going to make me feel and I find that that helps me stop I'm a big analogy person and hearing this actually really helped me when it came to binge eating I saw this thing that was like if you were hammering in nails and you accidentally lightly tap your hand with the hammer aka eating a cookie would you then start banging your hand with the hammer and break all of your bones aka eating the whole box of cookies no so why would you do that with food? That's what I found really helped me. So I hope that that helps any of you guys. Healthy foods I swear by. My number one, 
Greek yogurt. Literally Greek yogurt. You can make it sweet. You can make it savory. It has the best macros ever. There's like 20 grams of protein per serving. I'll eat it for breakfast. I'll eat it for lunch, dessert, literally anything. It's good alone. It's good in recipes. Like literally Greek yogurt deserves an award for existing. How do you plan to prioritize protein and eat a healthy slash balanced diet while away at college? I'm very grateful. SDSU has a fire meal plan. It's like restaurant based. So like Starbucks is on the meal plan. And, and there's this place called Shake Smart, which is like protein shakes. That's on the meal plan. Um, they also have like these markets that have like fresh fruit, salads, all kinds of like really healthy high protein options. I just feel like San Diego State is a very health focused school which I'm really excited about. So I feel like that's just gonna be like my go-to, just like finding those healthy restaurants and choosing those. And then obviously if my friends wanna go and get ice cream or something, like I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna keep my health goals in mind and try to remember that 80-20 rule. 80% on track, 20% fun, memories, ice cream at 12 a.m. at night, who knows. Also guys, side note, the people that can't finish a Chipotle bowl and they're like, oh my God, there's so much food. I can't do it. Sorry, I will always finish my Chipotle bowl. Did you notice anybody treating you differently after you lost weight, friends, family, etc.? I really like this question because honestly, yes, I did. I got good comments and bad comments. I got a lot of praise for losing weight and respect for being so disciplined, which I definitely appreciated. But then sometimes it would cross a line and get more negative, like, oh, she wouldn't eat that. She's too skinny for that. Oh, she wouldn't eat that. She's too healthy for that, which was honestly really detrimental to my own mindset because I had a great relationship with food during the beginning of my fitness journey. But hearing so much like, oh, she would never eat that. She's too fit for that. Those comments kind of started being engraved in my head and then I felt like I couldn't eat that because I wanted to maintain the reputation of the super fit friend, the super healthy friend, and it kind of spiraled down from there. I will say that externally too, I got a lot more praises of my appearance when I started losing weight, which I don't think is right, but to be honest, it, I was treated differently. I keep having to open my door because it's so hot in my car. What does consistency mean to you in terms of health, wellness, and fitness? Consistency to me means showing up for yourself every single day. It doesn't mean hitting X amount of workouts, doesn't mean doing this diet for this long, no. It just means showing up for yourself every single day. And some days you're gonna be able to show up for yourself more than others, and that's okay. Being consistent means showing up for yourself and choosing yourself and choosing your future, at least to me. So maybe one day, I can only get myself to do a 20 minute workout. I was still consistent. Maybe tomorrow I'll do a two hour workout. I was still consistent because I chose to show up for myself both of those days. So to me, that's what consistency means. Would I be interested in pursuing nutrition in college? I'm definitely interested about learning more about nutrition. And right now I'm in the process of becoming a certified personal trainer and there is a large nutrition portion in that. So I'm definitely interested in learning about it, but I'm not gonna take it as my major. Who do you get motivation slash inspiration from? who is your role model Sammy Clark I have looked up to Sammy Clark my entire life like throughout my whole fitness journey I just love her balance and her view of the world and and just how focused she is on her health and wellness I love it and then also as a businesswoman I also really look up to her because she created form and has this amazing community and I just literally love everything about it so I really look up to Sammy Clark have I ever gotten recognized in public? Yes, I have. It is always a crazy experience to me. Like it's literally surreal and it always warms my heart. Like I love meeting you guys, please. Like if you ever see me, come up to me, say hi. I wanna hear about you. I wanna get to know you. I wanna hear your name. Like don't be scared. I promise I'm nice. It literally makes my day. How has your acne impacted your relationship with Grant? My skin might look pretty clear right now, but that's because I'm wearing makeup. So for anyone who doesn't know, the past few months have been really hard, honestly. I've been really struggling with my skin and I feel like it's honestly strengthened me and Grant's relationship because first of all, he stayed. And anyone that wouldn't stay, like good. You don't wanna be with them. If your appearance matters so much to them and that's like the foundation of your relationship, bye. But there have been so many times where I haven't really felt confident, I didn't wanna go out without makeup, which is honestly sad to say because you're beautiful with and without acne, but I know that it's hard to feel that way. And Grant has honestly been such a huge part in helping me feel beautiful and doing skincare with me. He always does face masks with me and reminds me that I'm beautiful no matter what. And yeah, so I feel like our relationship has definitely strengthened because of it. And also Grant struggled with acne more so 
last year. So it's kind of also been like a bonding moment between us because I've had clear skin our whole relationship and he hasn't. So then when it kind of got switched, it like bonded us even more, I feel like. The best way to lose weight by keeping your muscle, I'm gonna assume you mean fat. Weight is just the scale, we know. The scale doesn't mean anything. So let's say fat, slight calorie deficit, high protein diet. Simple as that. Keep lifting weights, do some form of cardio, make sure that you're in a slight calorie deficit, or even honestly, maintenance calories, depending on your metabolism and depending on how far you are into your fitness journey. And then just make sure that you're eating lots of protein because the protein is going to keep your muscle there and the calorie deficit is going to help you lose some fat. How did you embrace slash learn to love being a more muscular version of yourself? More muscular? I've always wanted to be more muscular. When I started my fitness journey, I always looked at the super toned muscular girls and I was like, I want to look like that. So whenever I see like a new muscle pop out, I'm like, ooh, like I'm getting stronger. So I love that, but I'm going to like kind of switch this and say a less lean version of myself. And honestly, it was hard. But when I realized the sacrifice and the toll on my social life that being so insanely lean was taking, I realized it wasn't worth it. And whenever I felt insecure about being less lean, I would remind myself, would I go back and erase the memories that brought me this body? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The pint of ice cream that I ate last night with Grant while we watched a movie... I would never go back on that. Realizing that the healthiest and happiest version of myself might be a less lean version of myself, it took me some time, but when I realized how much more worth it it was and the higher quality of life that I was living and the experiences that I was gaining through this a little bit less lean body, it made all the difference. Where do you get your jewelry and does it tarnish? So most of my jewelry is from Amazon. This is from Amazon. My watch is from Amazon. It's all linked to my Amazon storefront in my Instagram bio. This I got off of uh, Poshmark and it did tarnish, which I'm kind of sad about. Um, I also really like Every Jewels and then In Root. And I will say all of that is pretty affordable. You do get what you pay for. As far as Amazon jewelry goes though, I haven't really noticed it tarnish, maybe like a little bit. None of it tarnishes like super, super bad or super, super quick. But when it comes to jewelry, I do feel like you get what you pay for. So if I buy something that was like really affordable and it ends up tarnishing after a few months, like I don't really stress about it because like at the end of the day, I chose to buy a $20 necklace. How to make more friends who are also into fitness. Love you and your channel. Thank you. If you wanna make like-minded friends, you have to do what you love and you'll meet friends through that. Do what you love, talk about what you love, and through that, you're gonna meet people that share those same passions. So if you don't have friends that wanna go to a workout class with you, go to the workout class alone, and then try to talk to people there so then maybe you can make friends who are already going to those workout classes. What is the best part about San Diego? Every time that I've been there, I feel like the vibe there is just elite. Everyone is relaxed. Everyone has a sense of style. I feel like it's also a very health-focused area. Like, I always see lots of healthy restaurants, workout places. So I just feel like the overall vibe there is just so good. Like, a way more toned-down LA, in a sense. Has your boyfriend ever cheated on you? Grant, no. My ex-boyfriend, yes. Not very fun to experience, but you know what? To anyone that's ever been cheated on, good. Because that person showed you their true colors, and now you can move on with your life and find someone better that's meant for you. I know it's so hard, and obviously it's not that easy, but at the end of the day, like, I would not be with Grant right now if I hadn't gotten cheated on. So, it all works out. It all happens for a reason. It sucks in the moment, but a better person is coming. How to start content creation and tips to grow. Just start, start posting across all platforms. Be aware of trends and like apply them to your niche. Post what you love because if you like to watch it, then odds are other people will too. Post consistently, post daily, and just stick with it because you're probably not gonna blow up instantly. But if you just keep posting, eventually you're gonna gain a following. So just stay consistent and post what you love and don't get discouraged and don't care what other people think because they're probably just jealous and they probably wanna start posting themselves. Tips on confidence for any acne girlies. Honestly, it is so hard. As someone that's pretty much always had relatively clear skin, getting acne this year really took a toll on my confidence and I've really just tried to push myself to not hide it as much. Like obviously, yes, I wear makeup, but I'm still posting on Instagram. I'm still posting on YouTube. Acne does not make you any less beautiful. You are still yourself. You are still your soul. Your body is the least important thing about you and it should be embraced. I try not to wear makeup. I, I still try to push myself to go out in public without makeup because even if I don't feel as confident, 
no one else is looking at me as hard as I am anyways. That's what I try to remind myself. And also everything is temporary. It's gonna go away. Even if it takes longer than you wish, it's gonna go away. And why would you spend time being a less confident version of yourself when you can choose confidence and just embrace your skin? And I know it is so much easier said than done, but that's honestly the best advice that I have. And I'm still working to do the same thing every single day. But yeah, that's the best advice that I have. We're beautiful anyways. And this part doesn't change no matter what our face looks like. Hardest part of your fitness journey, probably realizing that I have different priorities than other people and I need other things that other people don't. It was always hard being around my naturally leaner friends that would eat whatever they wanted. And I would have to remind myself that personally, I don't have their metabolism and I, and I had certain goals for myself and I couldn't eat that way. And I'm not saying restrict. Obviously we don't restrict here. Hot girls eat. We know this. It's all about balance, but it was hard to adapt to having to say no sometimes in order to reach my fitness goals. And it was also hard just to like have different goals than other people. Like so many people around me never worked out or anything. And it was hard to just like stay true to myself and put my priorities first. Wait, my camera's gonna die, so I'm switching to my phone, oh my god. We're on my phone right now. We've been through two cameras, now we're on my phone, which is showing you guys how this video is going. But I'm just gonna answer a few more questions and then wrap up this video because I don't want it to get too long. One of the questions was, am I going to rush? The answer is yes. I'm very excited to join a sorority and just like find lifelong friends. So I'm definitely gonna rush. Another question was, am I going to start a podcast? I really want to, and I was going to do it this summer, but I decided that I want to get certified as a personal trainer so that everything that I'm telling you is like absolutely scientifically backed up because right now what I'm telling you is based off of my own personal experience and my own research. But before I start a podcast and like actually go in depth about these topics, I really want to be certified. So that's why I didn't start one this summer, but hopefully maybe coming soon, depending how transitioning to college goes. Two more questions. What was my favorite memory of high school? And without a doubt, going to football games, dressing up for the themes, being with all my friends, the energy. I just loved football games. So those were definitely my favorite memories of high school. Even though by the time graduation came, I was very ready to graduate. I loved high school. Um, and then the last question was my favorite thing about myself. I think that's a really sweet question. And honestly, you should answer that right now too, because I think that's not asked enough. I think we don't give ourselves enough credit about what we love about ourselves. So answer that yourself. Actually comment it. Comment down below your favorite thing about yourself because I want to hear them. But I would say my favorite thing about myself is I feel like I'm a very level-headed person and I feel like I think things through. I feel like I have a good mindset about my life and the world. And I also feel like I'm pretty well Spoken. I like to think that I am and I like to think that I'm mature for my age Which honestly helps me in a lot of situations like by not overreacting and having a very like calm mindset about things So that's probably my favorite thing about myself. And so with that, I'm gonna end off this Q&A here I'm almost done with my chipotle bowl. I was talking more than I was eating. So I love chipotle guys Anyways, thanks for reading lunch with me. I love you guys so much like and subscribe Make sure you're following all of my social media platforms. And with that, I will see you in the next one.